T-minus 31 seconds, and the handoff has occurred. 25. 20. Firing chain is armed. Our suppression water system is armed. Go for main engine start. 8, 7, 6, Zero and lift off for the final launch of Endeavour, expanding our knowledge, expanding our lives in space. Houston is now controlling Endeavour beginning to uh, roll over onto its uh, back. The roll program underway as uh, Endeavour begins the heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree. 136 by 36 statute mile orbit. Three engines now throttling down as Endeavour uh, passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. Approaching one minute into the flight. Endeavour, go at throttle up. Endeavour's three uh, main engines now back at uh, full throttle, all uh, three engines in good shape. Endeavour's already uh, traveling 1,300 miles per hour at an altitude of 11 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, now 12 miles. At liftoff, uh, Endeavour fully fueled, uh, weighed four and a half million pounds. It's already lost half that weight in propellant now, burned that weight. Next event is burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Uh, that upcoming here shortly at the uh, two minute, three second point, those boosters are burning 11,000 pounds of fuel per second. As standing by for separation of the solid rocket boosters. The onboard guidance system has done its job of settling out any dispersions introduced at burst booster separation. The uh, Orbiter is now traveling 3,200 miles per hour, downrange 50 miles, altitude 37 miles. All systems in good shape. Center. And indeed, James, it was an incredible moment, unforgettable, to see this ascent of the space shuttle and then see it disappear in the cloud up here. I still cannot believe I was here, just five kilometers away from the launch pad. My heart is still beating. <laughs> Professor Ting is principal investigator of AMS. This must have been one of the most exciting moments for you as well, maybe as exciting as getting the Nobel Prize back in 76. And different. So getting Nobel Prize as a result of the work. And this is just the beginning of a new work, uh, explore a new region. It's a more or less a continuation of the work people done at CERN. Exactly. There's been a lot of work preceding this moment, a lot of tough moments. Uh, sometimes you didn't even know it would make it to space. Professor Aguilar, is the tough part of the job done? Well, this has been a tough part, but in front of us we are 
there's still many things to do because the goal of the experiment is produce scientific results. In order to do that, the experiment has to work properly. We have to collect the data and we have uh, to analyze the data. The construction of the experiment, the assembly, has been really a, a tremendous endeavor. And I am going to profit from this occasion to thank all the funding agencies, all the research institutions, and particularly all the people that during many years had devoted a tremendous amount of time and talent in order to achieve our goal, to have a detector which has been sent today on his way to the International Station. So there is plenty of things to do, but a critical part of the project has been fulfilled. So. Thank you, Professor Aguilar. I just forgot to say that Professor Aguilar represents the Spanish part of AMS. We also have here Deputy Spokesperson Roberto Battiston, who represents the Italian part of AMS. Roberto, uh, AMS is now in orbit. Very soon, the doors of the payload bay of Endeavour are going to be open, and it's going to give the first sign of life from space. This is one of the milestones. What are the other milestones ahead? Yeah, the, in about two hours, uh, the experiment will be switched on just to check the thermal properties and making sure that it's going to be delivered under ideal thermal condition to the space station. But in about three to, three to four days, uh, it will be docking in the space station and then the experiment will be extracted from the, bay the cargo bay and installed finally on the International Space Station main truss in position S3. It will be a fantastic moment also to watch because these images will be very beautiful. And then, within uh, a short time, order of a uh, few hours, uh, the experiment will be really switched on in a complete configuration and start taking data. From that moment onward, we will have uh, many, many particles, thousands of particles per second, millions of particles per day, billions of particles per year collected, and then this physical analysis will start. Uh, the Payload Control Center will be initially at Houston and then will be moved to CERN and the analysis will be done in the various centers all through Europe and the world. And then the fun and the interesting part of our effort will begin. Just one last word, Professor Ting. When do you expect the first important results? We have no competition. So we are going to do this very slowly, very carefully, not publish preliminary results, publish the data, we're absolutely sure. In your usual style. And to conclude this connection, I would like to offer the AMS collaboration a good luck object. This is a dark matter particle. I have pleasure to deliver it to your hands. And good luck, uh, AMS, with the search for the unknown in the universe. Made in China. It's made in China. Go, AMS. Oh, it's a very exciting time. I'm confident everything will be okay. We are looking for unusual phenomena. We call it astroparticle physics. Now we have the technology to do that.